Now with regard to this book in particular called the Vedanta Treatise, it is important to understand the reason it was written and how important it is for humanity and in this day and age. So going back to the origin of Vedanta, so thousands of years ago in ancient India, see if you read the primeval textbooks, the Vedas, they, they say it, you know, that uh, the milk flowed like rivers, the grains were bursting, you know, they had, there was so much prosperity. But they found these great thinkers analyzed and found that by increasing the outside facilities and wealth, whatever wealth was those days, they were not getting any happier. It's a very interesting flow of thought which happened thousands of years ago. That's how this whole knowledge started. So they started looking within to find out what life is all about. And those days, it so happened that a majority of the society was interested in this pursuit. And it has never happened since. It was called Satya Yuga, the, the age of truth. So this knowledge was discovered and given out in the form of very terse and cryptic statements called Mahavakyas. There were four Mahavakyas, means great statements which we did, those of you who completed the book, uh, we were doing that. The definition of the truth, the uh, declaration, the definition, the declaration, the advice to the seeker, and then the path and the culmination, which uh, I won't get into now because that's uh, that's for another day. But they were give this truths were given in the form of very terse statements. That thou art was the second statement. You are the self. But those days the people's intellect was strong enough, pure enough to understand these truths. They used to reflect and think and understand it. And after a while, maybe hundreds or thousands of years, they were not able to understand. So they had to explain these statements. And those are the first textbooks of human philosophy called the Upanishads, which are in the Vedas, where they explain these truths. In fact, that is the foundation for the philosophy of Vedanta, is the Upanishads. And then thousands of years after the Upanishads, nobody understood the Upanishads. The Vedas themselves had become completely divorced from people's lives. That was the time of Krishna, the time of the Mahabharata. So they understood, Krishna understood, Vyasa understood that people no longer understood the Vedas. They had become addicted to the rituals and the non-essentials. Much like today, the people were doing these rituals and practices and prayers for their own selfish purpose. In fact, it's written in the Gita. So the Gita was taught and composed 700 verses to explain those three words, Tattva Masi, you are the self. In fact, we learn the Gita, right, verse by verse on Sundays. I'm talking, the Gita is about uh, thousands of years ago. Right, And then 1200 years ago, which is about 880, there was a saint in South India called Shankaracharya, who Adi Shankara, the first Shankara. And he understood that people no longer understood even the Gita. See how it's happened. I'm talking about the deterioration. So he wrote introductory textbooks. Bhaja Govindam, uh, called the Bhaja Govindam, Atma Bodha, Tattva Bodha, you know, and he 
wanted to bring the knowledge of the Gita to the common person. So you come to the present day. Now we're talking about my Guru Swamiji is 95, the author of this book. We're talking 60 years ago, 65 years ago, when he started his, 70 years ago, started his spiritual journey. So he was researching all these books and he realized that there is no book now. Nobody understands Bhaja Govinda, Mahatma Bodha, who understands? Simply they're chanted, nobody knows what it is. So the need of the hour was to present this whole philosophy of life in contemporary thought and language. So that is the greatness of this book. You will not find. So it took him 25 years to research, conceptualize, write. So it is literally the modern scripture for humanity because it contains the entire philosophy. Vedanta is not a philosophy of India or it is a philosophy of life. It is, it is the underlying knowledge of all the religions. Please understand that. It's, the, it's, the, it's life principles. In fact, one of the names for Vedanta is Sanatana Dharma, which means eternal principles. These are principles, that's it. Hmm. Gravity is a principle. Motion is a principle. Physical principles. So there are spiritual, mental principles of life. You've got to learn it. Hmm. So here is a book where you will be taught from day one, from, from the basics right till the end. 